Um, Ray, can I ask, is that uh, operating now, that bus yes, station? Yes, yeah, it is. It is. But the, uh, I think there's supposed to be 190 houses out there, and there's, there's nowhere near that yet. Mm -hmm. But the station's already to go. Um, I guess, as I, I said last year, wastewater basically eats everything. And uh, within 10 years, you're replacing what you replaced 10 years ago. So uh, I guess what's important is the projects that we've done. Uh, in the last year, we finished off a, uh, an ADA project in the administration building. So we have a new ramp, and the bathrooms are all in compliance. We have uh, our sludge the watering building has a new $100,000 roof on it. Um, the raw sludge building, um, we were working for a while to figure out how to get all the electrical stuff out of the, uh, the, the flooding basement and everything. We realized we could put a second story on the building. So everything's lifted up now. Uh, well out of the 500 year storm, so that's that's been a good, it's all new electrical equipment now on the second floor. The, uh, we have a new building we call the power building, which has the new generator in it, and uh, it's, it's very tall, basically the first floor is up out of the 500 year storm, and then there's a second floor on it now with a safe room, so uh, it's, <laughs> it's in, you know, biblical proportions if we ever have to, have to use that safe room. Um, but again, we have all new electrical switch gear, all new cables, so we're in, we're in good shape. Final clarifiers, we've got uh, three clarifiers of all new rotating mechanisms. One of them's getting a new bridge. Um, for a couple of projects for Hurricane Sandy, um, we have uh, flood barriers. Every door in the plant and every window that's low now has a barrier. Anytime we expect a bad surge or anything, we just we can put the barriers in all the windows. So that's, that's another improvement. Then we have sump pumps. So all the, there's five buildings with deep basements. They all have now oversized sump pumps so that if the buildings begin to flood, we can pump them out. So in the collection system, we've done uh, another, we call them I&I, &I, infiltration inflow projects. The, uh, the townships, we've divided into 15 different basins, and every year we try to do one of the basins. We basically send a camera in and we TV every line and then we go back and, and uh, repair any leaks or any breaks, anything we see. And that it has a lot of benefit, side benefits. The plumbers love it because they can find out exactly where a main is tapped by a lateral. It's the only thing that really will tell you something like that. Um, aerial crossings. We replaced three aerial crossings. Those are the areas where the deep ravines are in Middletown. Sometimes we have to send a pipe right across. and. Uh, the distance is, you know, 50, 100, 150 feet. They get pretty long. And the, the supports, when they've been standing in a swamp or so for, uh, you know, 20, 30 years, they start to move. <laughs> and uh, it's, we've uh, we replaced one that was 132 feet long. And then uh, there were two supports that were just beginning to turn. So we, we basically repaired all of that. Um, Let's see, pump stations, we, we standardized on a nice design now. We used to have what they called a dry well and a wet well. And the, the pumps were down in the dry well, and the wet well would, would include the sewage. And that, now what we have is a, just the one well, and there's submersible pumps down in the, down in the well. So it's, it's much safer. You don't have to go down into the, into the wet well at all, or dry well. And the submersible pumps are newer and more efficient than it's a nice design. So we basically put that out at the, the Emory Dry Pump Station. Now has that the Jumping Brook, the Clay Pit, the Hilton Park. We're kind of marching our way through the 13 pump stations, well, the 14 pump stations. Um, we've got possible projects for next year. Nothing's been okay yet, but we'd like to do another I and I project. Um, digestive cleaning and mixing system improvements. Um, our primary settling tanks are you know, going on 40 years old and they need up updating. Um, there's some more aerial crossings out there. There's another three that need our attention. And then there's four very small ones that we can repair ourselves. They just basically need a good paint job. Um, we've got, uh, we still have some uh, underground storage tanks that uh, every year we kind of get by with them. They're, as long as they allow us to do statistical the statistical um, work on them, we're okay. But one of these years they're going to say no more and those are going to have to come up out of the ground. 
Um, let's see. And then we're, we are participating in the BPU microgrid grid project, which, uh, um, you know, we have, a, we have our own emergency generator, but basically putting us all together down there will, will improve things. So, um, all, that, all, the, uh, all the money basically for this, these projects came from FEMA funds, the NJEIT, NJEIT, NJEIT forgiveness program, and state grants, so we basically used everything that was available. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Do you have any any questions? Right. Ray, when you when you do the analysis of the um, with the camera, yeah, is there a lot of damage? No, no, it's a, a lot of it's uh, mostly we just see leaks. Um, the joints will leak after after the years, and we can actually they have something that they send down and it grouts them. And uh, it's you know it's not it doesn't last forever it lasts for maybe five years or so but um we sometimes you'll get a break you know there's it, um, that's it's uh, I'm trying to kind of say how many but in a project um, you may get one or two breaks that's about it and uh, and then most of the repairs are actually repaired with sleeves you can send these little sleeves down. And they have a packer that, that blows up and forces it into shape, and it's pretty interesting. But uh, you know, the thing is, that it costs so much to dig up a pipe that they're coming up with all these technologies now that, that you don't have to do it. You can basically send something down, and either it blows up or puts uh, ground in, or uh, um, and then every once in a while you have to do a dig up. You know? and, uh, we have a good emergency contract for that, so. You know, I'm raising some not watching football this year. I may just watch that. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've got more. Yeah. Better than yeah. Thanks, Ray. Sure, sure. Okay. The Middletown Housing Authority manages approximately 515 public housing units in the township. Of this number, 252 of the units are owned by the authority, and all are designated as senior or disabled housing. Daniel Towers on New Monmouth Road contains 100 units, and Tomaso Plaza has a total of 152 units. The remaining 263 units are subsidized through the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. The Middletown Housing Authority this year absorbed the displaced tenants from the Bayshore Project and housed those individuals through private landlords via the Section 8 program. Until the Bayshore project was completed, we are happy to say that 27 of the 30 tenants that were removed from that um, have moved back into the newly created Bayshore Village and are, seem to be very happy with the new project. Um, improvements that will be completed, planned, or underway at Daniel Towers this year will include replacing all the shower heads, aerators, and power save flusher toilets in all the units in an effort to conserve energy, and that's an ongoing project from uh, the end of 2017 through 18. Redesigning the landscaping and the exterior of the building, which will include installing a new underground irrigation system, and that's planned for early 2018, and to create a new patio area, uh, replacing the existing patio area out back and uh, creating a new patio area out front. Improvements completed or planned underway at Tomaso Plaza include, uh, this year replace all the hallway flooring and common areas through all six floors in our community room, replace the wallpaper in all the common areas as well, uh, our big project this year is redesigning, regrading, and replacing the parking lots, curbing, and patio area on Tomaso Plaza. We finally received three successful bids. Uh, we will be presenting to our board next meeting. We'll pro at the time that this starts, it will be a three-phase project. At one point, we will need to contact uh, through the towns or the DPW. We'll have to um, utilize some of the space on Tomaso Plaza, um, Reno Boulevard, as the residents will be displaced, uh, displaced with parking as we go through our, our phases. Um, the first phase will probably not involve that, so by early spring of next year we'll contact the township to try to work something out with that. And the Middle Middletown Has Authority will to continue to improve and upgrade their units through various federal grants, and we are taking advantage of any new programs out there and funding sources as they become an available in an effort to bring each of its projects to applicable modernization and energy conservation standards. Um, the residents continue to be a vital part of the process and all the decisions concerning the authority, and their concerns are addressed through a resident advisory board, monthly tenant meetings, and individual resident requests. 
Uh, we also have an open door policy at the executive office and it's been key in creating an open line of communication through which all suggestions and concerns are carefully considered when deciding what needs to be improved on at the Middletown Housing Authority. How long will that be where the residents will have to use green oak? I'm sorry, how long? How long will it be when you have to displace the residents? To it's going to be done in three phases. Um, so it, it will be probably start to finish a total of eight months till the project is completed. And depending on what phase they're on, there will be um, approximately 30 to 40 cars that are displaced. So we'll have to maneuver around. Um, but I know the one part of Green Oak Boulevard, I think you can only park on one side, mm -hmm. like in front of Duck Donuts, up that way. I know right. you can't park. And there will be heavy equipment utilized at some point in time, too. Um, so we'll have to work closely with the township when it gets to that stage. Okay. Just, you know, give us as much Heads up. as possible. Heads up, absolutely. So, thank you. I'm sorry, anybody else have any questions? Okay, thanks. Next item of tonight's agenda, we have the Middletown Rate Team, ADF Climate for Fellow Program, uh, State Initiatives Grant Slideshow. Oh, yeah, it's so matter. <laughs> um, just need to open that. I'm going to take about 10 minutes or so. Um, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I would like to provide some information to you uh, regarding the recent initiatives and activities of the Middletown Green Team. Um, we've been fairly active in the past year. I just want to go through some of the items we've been doing and highlight one activity that really requires your support. So I'm here um, just to review the activity and for your consideration and support. And then also I'm going to touch upon some um, state grant programs and incentive programs that are available right now that have the potential to save the township energy and money. And then, um, and so before I start this presentation, this really this slideshow uh, presents the results and the findings of the township's Climate Corps Fellow. Um, through a technical assistance program and, uh, and a grant provided by Sustainable Jersey and funded by New Jersey Natural Gas, over this past summer, the township participated in this Climate Corps program, was matched with a fellow. His name was Ellie Hugh Dietz. He was a master's student at Duke University. And he was tasked with finding, figuring out what it takes for the township to save more energy. So these slides that are following are really his uh, slides that he created. It's his results and findings, or they're based on his findings that are really interesting. Um, interesting. So the first program I'm going to talk about, you may know, is the State DPU Clean Energy Program. And of the many services that they provide, um, they do free energy audits for homeowners, local businesses, or businesses, and local governments. Um, and the audit will measure existing buildings, uh, energy consumption, outdoor lighting consumption. It will also make um, recommendations for any type of improvements to lighting and HVAC, <coughs> so any energy efficiency improvements. So Middletown actually participated in this free audit program back in 2009. Um, we audited 21 <coughs> buildings. Of the 21 buildings, we took advantage of another clean energy program known as the Direct Install Program and completed energy improvements at 15 of those buildings. And at the time, the Direct Install Program finance or covered 75% of the cost of the improvements and then the remaining cost was covered by a federal grant that we had received at the time. Um, so LEU had recommended do the do this audit again. We're seven, eight years later down the road and there's still savings to be had, believe it or not. Um, this gives us the opportunity to add more buildings that we didn't consider in 2009. LED lighting was not an option. Now it is, so all that lighting can be re replaced with even more efficient um, LED lighting. And we can also look at ball, some ball field lighting, which we didn't really look at outdoor lighting uh, the first time around. Um, we did complete an application 
and um, the timing on that is, is going to be a, a number of months. Though. So we did complete that energy audit application. So I did work with Elihu over the summer, and we gathered 14 months of consumption data for um, 24 buildings, the CNG station, and some ball field lighting. And it's it was a lot of work. Um, so we looked at electric, gas, and then some buildings are, are on oil. Let me make sure I don't want to miss anything here. Okay, so this just talks about the electric consumption of the township, and this is what was um, concluded from aggregating all of that data. So the township currently pays 75 different electric accounts. We've audited 27 of those accounts, which represent roughly 90% of the township's electricity costs. So of the natural gas accounts, um, of the 22 total, we've audited 15, which represents 94% of the township's natural gas. And it's not a pure 100% of the natural gas. Um, it's missing the McLeod Rice Building, which consumes um, natural gas, approximately 8,000 per year, and then also some emergency generators that consume uh, natural gas. So those facilities are not included on the audit. This pie chart illustrates the energy consumption in Middletown. It doesn't um, include the township's municipal fleet, so gasoline or diesel. So the large amount um, of, of energy consumption is the electric. Some interesting findings that Ellie Hugh had um, found um, talking about the McLeod Rice House. The reason why we left that out on the audit because we do understand it's under um, a reuse review study, so we, we didn't include it on the audit. The Cultural Arts Center interestingly uses nearly 50% of all of the township natural gas during the summer months and then 8% of all natural gas year round. And the library, this is an interesting find, finding. The main library has a peak demand of 233 kilowatts. And I'm going to talk on the next slide about the direct install program. But this boots out the library uh, to be eligible for that program because it exceeds 200 kilowatts in peak demand. So maybe a minor change of setting uh, the thermostat to 74 would put that back into the eligibility of that program. So post-energy audit, um, like I said, the energy audit is going to be completed, completed in, in a few months, but when we have the audit delivered to the township and we're reviewing the recommendations, um, some of the ways to talk about possibly funding the, the improvements recommended. So at the time right now, DI covers 70% of the cost of upgrades. And then as for the 30%, um, Either Middletown can come up with it in capital, or um, I have to really check my notes on this, and, and some of you may be familiar with this, but the township can enter into an energy savings improvement program, um, and it allows the municipality to enter into a contract of up to 15 years that they can finance that 30% in building upgrades in a manner that ensures the annual payment is lower than the savings projected from the upgrades. So it's always a cash flow positive, uh, I guess, loan. But if, you know, the recommendation right now is, you know, once we receive that audit, to consider an ESIP and to have that discussion with the Clean Energy Program. For the new municipal complex, something to consider. Clean Energy also has a pay for performance, P for P program for new buildings. Um, this provides an incentive to the building owner that when you're designing a new building, to design it more efficient. Um, specifically, that it exceeds the code compliant baseline by 5% in energy cost savings. And there are um, levels of incentives that are provided throughout the phases of construction. Um, for example, if you decided to do a P for P for the new municipal complex, the first incentive would be given out after submission and approval of a proposed energy reduction plan. And the incentive ranges from $0.08 cents to $0.16 cents per square foot up to $60,000. And then there's two other incentives that are given out as the building is constructed um, and operating. 
So really the recommendation at this point would be, you know, when that RFP is, is sent out to the developer, that require that he works with a P4P partner um, so that, um, you know, you could design a, a more efficient building. Okay, and then just another state program, <coughs> Drive Free New Jersey. It's an incentive program that offers um, $5,000 uh, for each level two EV charging station that's constructed. Um, you know, Middletown is eligible. It's a first come, first serve. We certainly have um, some terrific sites that would be prime locations for EV stations. Although the just to share with the group, although there is no funding right now, they're accepting applications for a wait list because they're expecting a very significant, um, some significant funding to come through. So that would be a suggestion. Hey, hey, you a question. Yeah. Do you know what the cost is for one of those charging stations? Um, see my notes. Um, for a level two charging station? No, I don't. I don't. But I could find that out for you. And then the second question is, who pays for the electricity that ultimately charges those stations? I guess it would be the township, but you could charge a reasonable, you could charge a fee to use the station. The funding for this program, it's through DEP, um, the funding that they're expecting, I think from the Volkswagen settlement. Don't they have solar generated charging stations? You know, charge of these level two. Yeah, maybe it's up for like a level one. And just another another sign of the times of this EV boom, whenever it may occur. I just realized um, JCP and LP at CNG they offer um, cash incentive to buy a Nissan Leaf up to ten thousand dollars, and there's state incentives and federal incentives, which I really had no idea. But. Just I, another I program. Just, I, I'm just having a little bit of a hard time with like, some of the verbiage should include the EV charging station infrastructure. We all know the cost of it, so just, okay. I understand. That. All right, these are recommendations. This becomes a so public maybe the, document, so that's okay. why. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry about that. Basically, the users pay. It's paid for by no, but you plug your car and you pay. But, but the installation isn't paid by the user. That's why. I'm, Move on. Okay. All right, so then finally, um, just to share with the Township Committee about the Middletown Green Team, we've been active since 2008, certified at the bronze level. We're on the path to silver, and we're very hopeful. Um, these items are just describe some of the activities that we're working on, um, but the one activity that I'd like to highlight tonight is um, the potential for launching a campaign, um, an outreach to our local businesses um, to let them know about the, the energy audits offered by the Clean Energy Program and that the, the part, possibility to participate in the direct install. Um, there's sustainable Jersey points associated with that type of outreach and you're engaging the community in, in becoming more sustainable. Um, so just internally, the hey, great, yes. Can you go back? Yeah, of course. What is the bottom? The, the a companion animal pet pledge. Play. What, what, yeah. That hasn't come yet. I'm working with the health department right now. So companion animals, it's it's a resolution that has to do with um, their their pets. So I it's it's in a working phase. Yeah, but what is the pledge for? Like what is that? I have it. Require the cat to do. It's it's really, I don't know. It's. I'd have to have it in front of me to give you the exact okay. information. But nothing's on, nothing's formal. It's just some of the things that were just new ideas yeah. that really haven't gone anywhere. Just looks out of place in that. Sustainable Jersey, yeah. the Energy topics City. for their points are, yeah, but I was trying to, you know, all things green. So these are some of the activities for the green team. And Sustainable Jersey, their points range from companion animal activity, you know, animal friendly activities all the way to building efficiency. So now, Amy, I'm sorry. Part of the group. Just uh, just this is to our credit too, because if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, most municipalities don't participate in sustainable Jersey and we do. And if I'm not mistaken, very few towns are climbing those those 
yes. ladder. So mm -hmm. this is to our credit um, that we really are leading the way with sustainable Jersey because I think a lot of towns aren't even um, bronze. Right. In fact. Right. So. That's accurate. And and if we did an outreach for, to the local businesses, um, no town in New Jersey has really, I mean, some have done the outreach, but the goal would be um, to have at least 5% of the local businesses participate in the direct install. And no town in New Jersey has done that yet. Um, and we can really give the opportunity for Middletown to be a leader, um, a, a leader in that. So we've developed a working group. It's made up of green team members and some resident volunteers. We've developed a schedule and a list of action items that we'd like to, we'd like to go forward with. Um, and what we're thinking is, that we would um, launch the campaign either through the Middletown <coughs> e-blasts or um, a banner ad on our website, followed up by a letter from the mayor. And, and other towns have done this. There's template forms in place. Um, but really just need your support if the green team could go ahead and, and you know, pursue that action. I think that's the biggest thing to get the word out to the businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm sure if you knock on, you know, 100 doors, 99 would not know what it is. Right, right. And if the audit is free and then um, DI pays for 70%, the 30% would have to come from either their, their capital or New Jersey Natural Gas has a, a financing program, 0% interest, um, that would help with that, that 30%. Um, we've already developed a flyer, which has gone nowhere, but just drafting uh, in, in the working group. So that completes the presentation. Do you have any questions, or I can I can get the information on the EV stations. Amy, have they mm -hmm. started giving points for historic preservation? There was a whole, yeah. uh, you know, move. Maybe, I was on for a Maybe for a master plan element. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. You can get points for it. Mm -hmm. and the way it was structured, Middletown would go right down the list. Right, definitely. Points all over the place. Yeah, we're always looking at points that the towns, the town is already doing a lot of things. Like, for example, the resolution for green purchasing. The town's already doing um, re purchasing recycled paper. Mm -hmm. So the resolution would really just be formalizing what purchasing is already doing, right. you know? Which is a lot of those things. So, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. I got it. Okay. Next item, we have purchasing items for the next meeting. Um, we'll have the second year maintenance agreement for the Stillman um, Records Management System in the Police Department. The, um, We'll be amending a resolution for the contract for the services, a resolution for other public care and maintenance contract for amendments, and the rebid of the pavilion structure with the green roof of Forsy Park, and the RFP for a microgrid feasibility study. Just on that, um, we, we did receive two proposals. Uh, we just got them very recent, so we haven't had a chance to really review them yet. So we'll have something on the agenda for the 16th to award. Then we have the change of use for Croydon Hall and um, Park Van Milton. Yeah, I just wanted to, to both of those things. Uh, so, as you know, Croydon Hall, uh, we've been um, talking about uh, turning the school building into a community center. Um, we have to do a change of use process for Green Acres. So we probably will be, we have to submit an application for them, which we're, we're working on. We probably will hold a public hearing on that, uh, which is a required part of the Green Acres process. Probably, probably be in a month or two, um, just to uh, uh, complete the, their, their change. It's a new procedure that a few years ago they didn't even have these procedures in place. Now Green Acres wants any change of use to a park or a park building. Um, you have to go through this process. So at least it's still considered recreation, right? Yeah, it's not. It's not really going to be an issue. It's just ironic that they they don't let you build buildings, but if you want to change the use of the building, they want to say they want to approve it. So right. typical, uh, but. So it's just it's just a fairly straightforward process. We'll probably have a public hearing, uh, you know, here um, 
one evening. It won't be attached to a committee meeting. It'll just be separate. Just the staff have to uh, attend that to answer any questions for the people who might have questions about the proposal. Um, that's it. And then with regard to park vandalism, you know, we've had we we received Green Acres grant um, for a number of improvements. One of which was to install security cameras at many of our parks. Um, we're waiting for the state to final, give us final indication that it's fully funded so that we can start applying for that because we've had some significant issues lately. And one of the most frustrating things has been you know, that the improvements that have just recently been completed at Ideal Beach have already been vandalized. And I mean in significant ways. I mean, major damage to the walkways, the handrails, the solar lights have been stolen and damaged. And it's, it's sickening. Uh, and. Um, so we're hopeful that we can put some more cameras in some of the, and you know, as you know, we've had vandalism problems at other parks over the years. People driving on fields, uh, uh, vandalizing electrical boxes at Tyndall Park uh, last year or two years ago. Um, so we're hopeful that we can get some awareness out there. Um, and hopefully if we get um, some images of people, you know, committing these acts, we'll, we can post them and try to uh, have people identify who's doing it uh, so we can frankly make an example out of somebody really because that's it's becoming a, a big problem um, and I, I don't think people realize that you know the taxpayers of Middletown that their their tax dollars are going to be charged to not only build the things but then repair it when it gets vandalized uh, and this place hasn't even been completed for six months and it's, it's been, been vandalized so <clears throat> we're going to push hard to get the state to um, you know, let us know when we can start to utilize that grant. Because a significant portion of that was to uh, install cameras, and um, hopefully it'll, it'll be a deterrent once people know we're doing it. Mr. Mitchell, what's on your mind? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll save my comments for our next meeting, but I do want to just make comment on the tragedy that happened in Las Vegas last night. And, uh, my condolences and my hearts and prayers uh, go out to those families and, and uh, all the people affected by that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Santa Marina. Nothing this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Fiore. Uh, my only comment this evening, Mayor, would be uh, with respect to uh, the staff and everyone that uh, did such a great job with regards to Mayor Town Day. What a tremendous uh, community day that it was. Uh, the weather cooperated beautifully, and uh, the attendance was fantastic. And uh, I'd like to thank the administration, uh, everybody who played a very big role, um, including the business community, the emergency volunteers, uh, all of our uh, volunteer organizations. It was everybody who participated. A wonderful day, and uh, another day for the town to be proud. Thanks. Um, I'm also going to reserve my comments for the next meeting, but just to piggyback real quick on what um, my colleague just said, um, just to remind everybody that we're very proud of that event, Middletown Day, because it's 100% fundraised. No taxpayer dollars are used for that, and that's quite a feat for an event that garners well over 10,000 people. What did we think? Maybe even more than 10,000 people. Yeah, probably. A lot more. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a feat, and uh, congratulations are always in order. It's definitely one of my favorite days of the whole year. So, thanks. Yep, I, I agree with everything that was said from Las Vegas to Middletown Day. And I'm going to withhold my comments even about the or oppressed multi-millionaires in the NFL until the next, uh, uh, the next meeting. So, thank you. Okay, we have other comments? Okay, um, just to lay out the ground rules, please state your name and address, and also please keep your comments to five minutes so um, everybody gets a chance to speak. If you want to discuss something further, we'd be happy to stay around, but uh, and just to keep the meeting moving, okay? All right, who would... Like to speak first. Okay, seeing no one. Oh, oh here we go. Ah, <laughs> good man. If you're not first, you'll ask here. Hi, my name is Shashank Bemaretti. Um, I'm 12 years old. I go to Thompson Middle School and I'm a Boy Scout for Troop 32. I live in 51 Pate Drive. Uh, to, um, I'm working on a merit badge called the Citizenship in the Community Merit Badge, and um, there's an, we need to talk about an issue 
So uh, I have an issue that um, that that's occurring in my community, and I have a picture that like it, sh it shows that there's people parking here when um, there's only like they're taking up half the road, and when they're going both ways, they can't fit in. So um, one uh, one side has to stop, and the other has, side has to stop, and it, it takes too long for the people to get through. This wasn't even planned, but we just talked about this earlier. Yeah. This is uh, unbelievable. This is the street we were talking about. Uh, um, Overton yeah. uh, is is a street that we were just talking about it. Um, so as soon as the the road isn't finished being built yet, because of that development, you know, where the t you live in the townhouse there, yeah. you know that development. So when when that some of the work on that property is not finished yet, when that's all finished then the road gets turned over to the town. Technically, that hasn't happened yet. As soon as it does, we're going to put a parking restriction on that so that people can park there and do that. But right now, we can't do it because the road isn't ours yet. But it will be soon. Okay? okay? We're working on it. It's on our radar. Thank you for watching. Good job. That wasn't even planned. <laughs> you should be very proud. You did, you did a better job than many adults. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. <laughs> Can I take one picture? I think. Okay. Yeah, definitely. We'll take. We'll yeah. take. Okay. Thank you. Uh, would anybody else care to speak? Hi, my name is Don Watson, living at One Collinson Drive. I just want to comment about Amy. Is it your name? Yes. About Amy's presentation, I think she did an excellent job with the, her and the green team, and I hope the town does implement a lot of the suggestions that comes out of that group. I think that's all I got tonight. Okay. Anybody else here to speak? Yes, sir. I'm John Valtos. I'm with DSP. We're a management construction company. Pate uh, was the contract signed between uh, the bondholder and the town. The town, the, the committee agreed to the settlement tonight, so uh, we'll let the attorney know tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Anybody else care to speak? One once? Okay. Seeing no further members of the public come forward, move to close the public portion and move to adjournment. Second. Maybe Yes. 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 Yes.